Hey friends, welcome back to the Mojo Rabbit channel. Today I am doing a full face of makeup using strictly Westman Atelier products. Well, okay, 99% Westman Atelier products. I have one brush by Chickahoodoo that I'm gonna use, but everything else is gonna be Westman Atelier beauty products, including her brushes. So before I dive into that full face, I'm gonna actually show you two products that are not in the Westman Atelier line, but they come highly recommended by Gucci Westman herself. And if you don't know who Gucci Westman is, she is the mastermind behind the Westman Atelier brand. She is a France trained professional makeup artist. She has a ton of celebrity clients. And in general, she's just a wonderful makeup artist. If you're interested in application methods for a very natural look, I definitely recommend that you check out the Westman Atelier YouTube channel. There's lots of videos by Gucci on there. And all of the kind of application methods I'm gonna show you today are based on things that I've learned from watching just a ton of her videos. So before we go into that makeup look, I'm gonna show you those two products that come recommended by Gucci Westman. The first one is actually something to put my hair back with. This is the Hair Objet by Deborah Pagani and uh, Deborah and Gucci Westman are friends. They're kind of constantly talking about each other because they both have amazing products. And this is just a beautiful metal pen. And I have really thin hair, but I have a lot of it. And normally things like this are completely useless for me. They just fall right out. But for whatever reason, this pen is magical. Keeps my hair back. It looks super chic. So I'm just going to show you how I do a really quick bun using the Hair Objet by Tabora Bugami. So we're going to get the back of my head here. So I'm just going to pull it up and do some twisting. And to use the pin, you actually start with it kind of in a U shape, arguably upside down. And you're going to take a little bit of the top of the bun and then do a U turn. Stick it right in there. And it's just such a chic little hairpin. It comes in a few different colors. This is the gold. They have a rose gold. They also have a silver. I think there might be one other color. I am going to link below to um, the Tabora Pagani page. So if you want to check it out, you can. Uh, next product. This is by You Beauty and it is the Super Hydrator. Gucci Westman recommends this as being a wonderful hydrator to put on right before you do a makeup look. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to do just a couple pumps of this, warm it up a little bit, and just kind of pat it into my skin. And I really actually quite enjoy this before makeup because it gives you a really nice glow without, without, <laughs> sorry, I'm trying this new little table thing here and I knew that was going to happen. It's going to knock stuff over and it was going to be disastrous. I just knew it would happen. So what's expected to happen at least one more time throughout this video. Okay. So that's the U Beauty Super Hydrator. I've kind of just patted it into my skin and I love that it, it gives you this glow without looking really greasy. So if you're doing a very minimalist makeup, I'm going to show you a little bit more full coverage makeup today just because it's a lot easier to see on camera. And if you really want to get a good idea of, of specifically like the foundation, how that wears, I think the way I'm, I'm going to demonstrate to you is um, more in the fun, kind of full coverage realm versus just a little touch up makeup. And where I'm going with that is that this moisturizer is wonderful if you're doing kind of just a little touch up makeup because it gives you that nice glow without the greasiness. You can kind of just, you know, tap in a little color correction and go about your day looking hydrated and glowy without putting on a ton of highlighter and all kinds of other stuff. Okay, are we ready for the Westman Atelier full face of makeup? Let's do it. So Vital Skin Foundation, that's where we're going to start. Now this is the shade N, which is actually really, really low on the scale in terms of shades. So this is actually sits below the Atelier One, which is arguably their lightest shade next to the N. I've seen Gucci demonstrate this on super, super fair models. And I am fair skinned, but I'm not super, super fair. But you'll be surprised at actually how well this color works for me. Um, so I'm going to, as I said, kind of apply it in a little more of a full coverage fashion than I normally would. Like I normally wouldn't put on this much of the product, but I really wanted you to get 
a good idea of what type of finish you could expect. And on camera, if I just go too minimalist, I feel like it doesn't do justice in, in really helping you understand what the look is. Okay, I've got the Weston Atelier foundation brush, and I'm going to use this to just kind of push the product into my skin, move it around, and you'll see if you watch Gucci Westman's video, uh, videos, her many videos that she does, every bit of her application is very soft and ginger and these feather light kind of upward motions. And I really think that that type of application lends to the more natural look. It's just not real heavy handed. You take your time and just really blend really well. And so that's what we're going to do here today. So as you can see, although that N is very light on the shade scale, it is still working for my skin tone. And I feel like I don't, I honestly don't have a great grasp of like, am I neutral? Am I warm? Am I cool undertoned? I, when I was younger, would have said warm because I tanned so easily. But I feel like nowadays, you know, can your undertone of your skin shift? I don't know. If it can, it's quite possible that I've shifted cool. And we're going to sort of see in a future video I'm going to do. I have the Cure Wise Foundation, which is kind of in the same category of this vital skin and that it's very clean, well-loved in the beauty industry as giving a very skin finish, which is something you could also expect from a Centillier. So in a future video very soon here, I'm going to do a side-by-side -side kind of comparison of Cure Wise to Weston Atelier. I'll do like a half and half face. So if you're not already subscribed and that sounds interesting to you, then maybe go ahead and subscribe so that you can be alerted when that bad boy goes up. Okay, so I feel like we're pretty well pat in with the foundation brush. I'm gonna kind of just take my hands and with the heat sort of just do a final melting and merging. And as you can see, if you kind of look down my neck, the color match is quite good to my neck. And a lot of times you see people who, who might have done a foundation look and made a little bit of a faux pas in making their face much darker than their neck. And so at least when I start a makeup, my base, I want my base, you know, face, neck, chest to look very homogenized, that it's very much all the same tone. And then we can add in depth throughout, but then it doesn't look like I'm wearing like a mask of makeup. Okay, so Westman Atelier Vital Foundation in N, N standing for neutral. So if you're somebody like me who doesn't really know if you're warm or cold undertone, going with something that's a neutral undertone is kind of a safe zone. Uh, you can't really go wrong there. Okay, next I'm going to use the original Lit Up, which is this white, it has kind of a purpley bluish luminescence to it, but doesn't really read real purple and blue. Uh, before I put this on though, I do wanna just point out how luminous my skin looks, which I really think is that U Beauty, uh, the super hydrator underneath. And then, you know, the vital foundation as well, which gives that very skin finish. But we're nice and glowy, so we don't need to go crazy with the highlighter. So lit up, I'm going to go cheeks, brow bone, Cupid's bow, which if you have smaller lips like I do, uh, that little bit of the Cupid's bow really makes a difference in definition once you have your lip color on, in my humble opinion. So we did cheekbones, brow bone, Cupid's bow, and I'm going to hit my clavicle here as well. And that's all she wrote in terms of where we're going to highlight. We're nice and glowy already from the U Beauty. 
You really could if you wanted to, you could put the lid up all over your face underneath your foundation to get a nice little glow if you wanted to, but I just feel like that You Beauty gives you that nice glow that it's not really necessary to do like a full face of highlighter or of the lit up highlighter underneath your foundation. So that's the lit up. Next, I have one of the newer or the newer face trace contour, and that is in the color Truffle. And this color was created for people with deeper skin tones. So if you are in Atelier 7 or below, the Biscuit shade was intended for you. If you have a deeper skin tone, so you're higher up on the Atelier uh, foundation scale, then this one was intended for you. Now, very clearly, I am not in Atelier 8 or above, uh, but I did see a lot of people on YouTube with fairer skins that were trying this out and really enjoying it. I do like it, but I absolutely agree that it is not an appropriate contour color for someone with lighter skin, or at least my color skin. It has a very reddish undertone, and for a contour, like, if you're trying to achieve the look of a natural contour, a natural contour doesn't have a reddish undertone typically, at least if you're a lighter complexed person like myself. So due to that, this actually works quite nice, more like a bronzer, and I find it you can get a nice lift if you actually use it uh, up here on the uh, cheekbone. So I'm gonna demonstrate it to you in that way. I'm not going to demonstrate it as a contour, uh, because it just doesn't look good like that. So here we go. Uh, I can get a nice lifting effect by putting this there. I'm going to put a little right here because this is where I naturally suntan. And because it has that reddish undertone and I'm using it sort of like a bronzer, I'm going to go for the places where I normally would get a natural suntan. And that's across here, across my forehead. So we're gonna go back to the foundation brush. And if you had their blender brush, that would be a really great one for this application. I have the baby blender, which I'm going to use a little bit later, but their larger blender brush, which has kind of this like, almost like you took a cone and cut it in half or the flat part of a cone. I don't know, it has this nice kind of wide flat base to it. Uh, it is something like $175, so I have not taken that plunge personally, but the foundation brush does the job too. So again, you know, I'm using these kind of like ginger padding motions, and really your fingers work fantastic with this line. Um, you don't have to do brushes, although I will say that the Weston Atelier brushes are, are really nice. They're very high quality made by one of the oldest brush makers in the world in Japan. And if you are looking for quality brushes and willing to invest in quality, this is definitely a brand to take a look at. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of just finish the application again with like the warmth of my hands. When you're applying cream-based makeups, your hands are really a good friend for kind of just getting a nice blend without any harsh lines. Okay, so that gave me kind of a nice little lift without having to go contour down the cheek. That little bit of the reddish undertone gave me kind of look like maybe I went to the beach last week kind of thing and I'm just working on that post vacay kind of suntan. All right, next I am going to use the Pop It shade of the blushes, which they call baby cheeks. So it's this very bright, somewhat intimidating pink, but it blends out like a dream. So don't be intimidated by the pink. Here we go. I'm gonna just kind of put it on the apple of my cheeks. And this is the Baby Blender which is wonderful for blending out the baby cheeks. So doing application in an oval motion. Blending with my hands there too, just for some reason today, I'm really feeling like I'm getting a good 
kind of melt in with my hands. I, I still, I can just feel that little bit of that moisture on my hands from the U Beauty Super Hydrator. I think that's why today I'm just feeling like, oh, I just want to keep pushing that in to my blend to just keep this lovely luminosity and uh, that I've got going on. So there we go. That was the poppet and the baby cheeks. As you can see, it did not give me some kind of crazy like 80s sort of look to my cheeks. So I'm thankful for that. Uh, next, I'm going to use the Coupe de Soleil shade of the Beauty Butter Powder Bronzer. This is the original shade. I believe there's a couple more shades now. And this is where that Chikahudu powder brush is going to come in. The one and only non-Westman Atelier product that I'm using in this full face. And uh, Westman Atelier actually does have a powder uh, brush in her line of brushes. I just don't own it. So Chikahudu is another really high quality brush maker that I highly recommend. So when Gucci applies bronzer, I mean, she goes like right up under the eyes, across the nose, not too far down the cheeks. Like she typically, you won't see her put it here. And then we're gonna just sweep across the top. And I like to also hit my jawline. Then for definition and also, you know, continuity, we started with that uh, very even look across the face, neck and chest. So I don't want to neglect adding bronzer down there since I've bronzed my face. So I kind of generally stick a little bit to the sides of my neck and then down here where I tan we'll add a good healthy bit and I'm actually going to come back to the truffle of that face trace contour and add some of that there because I really I find when I tan I usually get it right there that nice bronzy color okay Let's do eyes next, my friends. So I have the Le Jour palette. It's these cute little magnetic pods. And I'm going to use two of the colors in this. So this is the color I'm not going to use. It's the Tabak shade. It's this kind of golden brown, very beautiful, versatile color. It's just not gonna find its way onto my face today. But we're gonna use the other two colors in the Le Jour palette. Um, the Neige color is intended to be kind of like a snow white, a bit pearlescent. Um, the color is a bit adulterated because I have dipped a brush that had darker colors into this and it's just never recovered. So just know, um, brand new opened up. It's this very kind of snow white color with some pearlescence to it. And then Chocolat is a nice kind of medium to dark brown. So I'm gonna start with the Neige. I'm gonna actually use this baby blender. It's just this fat kind of brush. I actually have one of the eye brushes from Westman Tilly that I'm gonna show you in a minute. But for this application, I'm gonna use the baby blender. And one thing I'll really say about these iPods, I have the day and the night uh, collection and they are very subtle in color. If you are wanting high payoff, high pigmentation, I dare say you would be very disappointed with these eye shades because they do not, I feel like no matter how much I dig my brush in here, I'm not going to get like a pop of color from any of these, but that's okay. I feel like um, an understated look, a more natural look is more often what I'm going for. I, I'm not much for the, you know, big impact editorial looks. And I also feel like they're a little more goof proof when the color is kind of subtle and you're not dealing with these harsh lines of like, ooh, color, and you're like, oh, I have to put it on perfectly to make it look good. So anyway, I'm using this Neige across the entirety of my eyelid and all the way up to my brow bone. I'm using this more or less as a base. And again, it's not a high color payoff. It's not like I just painted, you know, white all around the top part of my eyes. 
Okay, next I'm actually going to use Cochette, which is another one of the Baby Cheeks blushes, but I really love this color on the eyes. And I've often heard this described as kind of like a peachy pink, which I don't necessarily agree with that description. When I think peachy, I think it has kind of an orangey sort of undertone. And I don't find this to have an orangey undertone whatsoever to it. So I would say it's more of like a nude type of pink. So I'm going to actually use my baby blender and use this right across my lid. Okay, next, we're gonna go back to that bad boy, the truffle, the face trace contour that's uh, intended for contouring that we're not using for contouring whatsoever. And this is actually great for adding dimension in the socket of your eye. I'm somebody who just never really carried eye product above like directly on my eyelid and, and just never felt like I could get that definition from a beauty product and it was just just felt like I had no idea what I was doing that wrong. For whatever reason, this just works really, really well for adding that little bit of depth, but not looking like you just put some majorly dark color like way up above your eyelids. I don't know, there's something about the combination of the Cochette and this, and, and being applied with this fat kind of brush, where it just looks like it all just kind of melts together and looks very natural. So love that. Okay, next the Chocolat shade um, that is from that Le Jour eye palette. I'm going to use that with this eye brush. I believe this is number two. She has an eye brush one and a two, and I believe this is two, but I'll confirm and link below. Um, it has the flat edge, and then it has this kind of narrow domed edge. And I love this for doing like a smudged eyeliner. Again, um, you know, I love a goof proof makeup and when you do kind of a smudged eyeliner look instead of trying to do this very precision line, um, you are more likely if you are like me to uh, end up with something that you like. So you're going to see again what I mean when I say there's not a ton of color payoff. So I really kind of dug my brush in there and that's a decently dark color. You would think I'm going to get a really dark payoff here, but you'll see it's going to be very subtle. So I'm dragging that brush across my bottom line and you can see the color when you compare it to this side, but it's not like this huge color payoff, super dark color, but it's just perfect for this application. I mean, I think you can really see I'm really digging my brush in there and I am not getting a ton of color. I just feel like I cannot say it enough. If you're considering buying this, I just, I feel like you'll love it if you understand what you're getting, but I feel like you will hate it if you're expecting to get some like nice dramatic color out of it because no matter how much I dig my brush in this, I just feel like I am never going to get like a nice deep rich brown look out of this. Okay, actually, you know what, while we have these two out, let's put a little color in my brows. So this is actually a trick I learned from watching Kira Wise videos, and I don't know if I mentioned it already, but I do have Kira Wise foundation on order, and I'm gonna do a future video half and half to kind of compare them side by side. They're both in the clean beauty category, both loved as giving a very skin type finish. So please subscribe if you would be interested in watching that comparison. Now, as I kind of started on this little tangent, Kira Wise uh, did a video where she talks about using an eyeshadow shade that is lighter than your natural eye color and kind of using that to fill in your eyebrows. And the reason why you wanna go lighter versus a perfect match or darker than your natural hair color is that it can look very painted on and if you're just looking to kind of fill in your brows a little bit, give them a little bit more definition without 
any kind of like harsh lines or it looking like just black and like really dark, you know, over your eyebrows, then going with an eyeshadow that is just a little bit lighter than your natural color can help you achieve that. And we're still using that eye brush from Weston Atelier. Okay, so just like a slight little addition and enhancement of my eyebrows. And I have crazy eyebrows that were plucked to oblivion in the 90s. And I feel like there's just no really saving them, but I did my best there. Ooh, one of the new ones, the squeaky clean lip balms. Um, they are liquid, like a gloss to die for magical. I know one of the biggest things I think of when I'm thinking about getting glosses is it's sticky, not sticky at all. I remember the second that this touched my lips when I first used it, I was like, Ooh, that's like super emollient. And it just has this feeling like you've put on a super nourishing balm, but then there's the addition of the color. So this is the pip squeak, which is described as a brick red. I don't know that I agree with that. When I think of brick reds, I think a little bit orangey. But this is like, I feel like I just, I look like I just had a delicious cherry popsicle. I mean, look at that color. And Gucci has a video where she talks about kind of the way that each one of the shades of the squeaky clean liquid lip balms can enhance your look. And for this one, it was brightening. And I agree that it is this lovely brightening shade. And I love to do kind of a natural look makeup. And when you complement that with a lip that's not like a statement like, ooh, red lip, but just a little flush of color like this, it, I don't know, it just makes the look look complete without looking like you're way overdone. Okay, I think the last thing I have here is gonna be the I Love You Mascara. This is a very clean mascara, over 90%, I think something like 93% clean. And um, it's really a lovely mascara. I am a huge fan of using clean products around my eyes. I kind of have a strict, gotta be super clean kind of mantra when I'm picking out things to go around my eyes because I have very sensitive eyes. And the one caveat I will say to that is I do quite enjoy a lot of the Chanel makeup products for around the eyes, like eyeliner. They don't seem to irritate me, but as a general rule, I lo really look for clean for around the eyes. So I actually, I want you to see side by side before I really add any to this side. Like it's not this huge spidery bam, but it's that nice wake you up effect that mascara is fantastic for. Okay, I feel like also right now you're getting quite a close up of my skin to help give you an idea of the skin-like finish that you can expect from the Weston Atelier products. So there we go. I think that's everything I wanted to show you. And I highly recommend Weston Atelier. I mean, I genuinely don't think I've tried a single one of their products that I didn't like. I highly recommend that you check out the videos by Gucci Westman. Um, whether you use Westman Atelier products or not, application methods are, are just wonderful. And I really like that U Beauty Super Hydrator. I still think I have this nice glow. And remember, I didn't put highlighter like everywhere. I only kind of put it on some little places. I told you, see, I told you I would have at least one other snafu with my little elevated table going back to that Cupid's bow to just give it a little more lovey-dovey from the lit up. But I just love how the squeaky clean lip color kind of gave me a little bit fuller of a look to my lips. It's definitely not like a quote unquote plumping lip 
product. It doesn't give you like that weird tingly heat or anything. I think it's more of just, you know, that color, that nice juicy color enhances. And I think that's what the Gucci Weston products are all about, are just enhancing your natural beauty, not masking it. And I really appreciate and love that. So I'm going to link everything that I use below. I would love to hear from you if you have comments. I will respond to you. And please do subscribe if you're interested in checking out that side-by-side -side comparison of the Kira Weiss Foundation to the Westman Atelier Foundation um, because I'm really excited actually to do that video because I've never used the Kira Weiss Foundation before and I see other YouTubers rave. So that'll be a fun one. And I hope to see you again soon. Thanks so much for stopping by.